All right, today I'm going to do a walkthrough of the 2011 English ESL exam, Tattoos the Power of Ink. Now, this is in the form of a blog, which is becoming increasingly popular with regards to end of year exams, both in mainstream and in EAL. Um, and sometimes it's worth uh, making comment about a couple of the blog features. For example, over here we can see that she has uh, 12,615 followers. Now that in itself will give this particular blogger, Helen Day, some credibility because she's obviously quite popular. Now, of course, as usual, I'm going to comment on this as I read through, so there will be some pauses. Let's have a look. Now, a lot of people found quite a lot of difficulty with this tattoos piece, both of the mainstream version and the EAL version, um, and I can definitely understand why. If we have a look at the heading, which is often where we look to find the contention as well as in the introduction and the uh, and at the end of the piece, the heading says tattoos the power of ink. So it almost seems there that the heading is saying that tattoos are very powerful, but right down the very end, she says of her own tattoo, it's just an ornament as ordinary as any other cosmetic peculiarity. So her contention, what I would phrase it as, is that um, tattoos do have the potential to be powerful if uh, used sort of for the right reason or the right cause. So not just powerful altogether. <clears throat> and we'll have a look at that a bit more further on down. Now, uh, I'm just going to have a read for a second. Okay, straight up, very beginning, <clears throat> this is both a generalization, um, it is exaggeration, hyperbole, it's also a personal testimony. So everyone has tattoos these days, okay, that's, that's a generalization, it's hyperbole because not everyone has tattoos, that's exaggerating, um, and also it's generalizing. Uh, <clears throat> the fact that she introduces herself very early on as having a tattoo uh, shows that she has personal experience with tattoos. Now, the effect of generalizing here makes us feel that um, tattoos are widely accepted. So things that are widely accepted normally beckon our support. Uh, also, the fact that she said that she has experience personally with tattoos um, means that that again, that gives her a sense of credibility. She's uh, she's not talking about tattoos from the point of view who some um, of somebody who's never even experienced having a tattoo. Mm -hmm. Okay. So her shopping center example um, is an anecdote, and again, it uses the power of her personal experience uh, to show that. This particular scenario has happened, it's a real example. Um, and down here we've got the contrast between suburban housewives and the Australian prison. So with that, the contrast is quite powerful because it, it uh, says to sets out to undermine common assumptions, to undermine any misconceptions or prejudices that people might have about tattoos. People might think that, you know, tattoos are for tough guys or something like that. So mentioning that they're on suburban housewives uh, hopes to correct that prejudice or misconception. Now, <clears throat> down here, she's used a simile, but also it's got a bit of humour built into it as well. The shock value of the tattoo has faded like, well, a tattoo. So the like obviously shows it's a simile. So she wants you to associate the fading of tattoos with the fading of their shock value over time. But also when she goes like, well, a tattoo, she's trying to be a little bit tongue in cheek humour wise. And so, this sets us into having sort of a light-hearted mood about the article, so we shouldn't be too uptight and too serious about this issue of tattoos.
Okay, so in this section, obviously, um, she's got a, sort of an appeal to history. Now, a couple of things here. Um, by getting an insight into what tattoos um, used to represent in the past, people can see that there is a bit of depth to tattoos. They have a history um, and sometimes they can have very serious significance. Also, by referencing history, um, she hopes to appeal to people's inclination that past is past and that things over time change. So if we were to um, keep having the same attitudes about tattoos, we may as well consider ourselves to be in the Middle Ages. But mostly, this history is meant to give a sense of, um, of depth and seriousness to the art of tattoos. Here we have some obviously inclusive language. If something is done without our consent, we often respond with defiance. Um, and that's in order to try and make the reader empathize with the idea that's being expressed here so that they can kind of feel the same way that if somebody did something without their consent, they would want to respond with defiance. Then they would be positioned to relate to the next few examples being presented. This particular anecdote of um, the convicts having property of Mother England on their backs so that when they're flogged, um, it seems like the, the floggers were vandalizing the property of the king. Um, in this particular instance, we're meant to be on the side of the convicts because, you know, that's kind of where some of the heritage of uh, Australia comes from. And also, we probably feel anti the guards, anti authority, because they're whipping, they're flogging. So we're positioned to be on the sides of the convicts and in this way support their idea of having um, tattoos put on themselves as sort of defiance. There's a bit of alliteration in here. Body, beautiful, boutiques, dared to defile. Uh, let's see what the emphasis is creating here. Body, beautiful, boutiques. Well, they're all very positively connoted words there. Beautiful and boutiques. They sound rather lovely. Um, but this, that's, of course, contrasted with dared to defile. So it's a very odd contrast here. Um, the word defile, let's have a look. Okay, so it really means it can be, yeah, obviously some very, very negative connotations. One in one being rape, but on the more modern sense, to damage the purity of. So by having such a contradiction, um, and in the context of the rest of the author's piece, we perhaps lessen the impact of dare to defile because of the it doesn't seem right that that a beautiful boutique would be somewhere where you can be defiled also we have this constant um, repetition of the idea that this is common okay we've got as common as fast food outlets which is another simile and that gives us a similar idea to all these suburban housewives. So we see it as being a very common practice and it's something that's common we want to accept it. Okay. So the use of exclamation marks and also mentioning um, high up uh, prominent positions like the Prime Minister's wife one, the exclamation mark helps to share the reader's sense of shock and surprise and go, yes, it is surprising, but, you know, we need to believe this. And also, um, the fact that they know that s such uh, persons of respect are wearing these tattoos, maybe will get them to change their perceptions about um, what tattoos are.
Now, by having, you know, doctor quotes, it shows that this person has done their research. And you could also analyze aspects of these quotes as well. Um, now, this here, the doctor AB is using very detailed description, like a sewing machine with one or more needles piercing the skin repeatedly. So that sort of imagery is quite likely to um, deter people from tattoos in a way. And this is where we start to um, consider that it's quite a serious sort of decision to make. And over here as well it says this sounds like a painful price to pay for a fashion fad. A fashion fad means a fashion trend that isn't lasting for a very long time. Now why would there be all these examples of people who are opposed to tattoos? Well as the writer continues on she has a series of examples, um, the next one we'll talk about in a moment, which is wearing somebody else's cultural symbols. And so all of these are sort of warnings, okay? Warnings that if you get a tattoo, it should be symbolic, it should be worth something. So that's why when we came back to what we said at the beginning, the power of ink, if it is worn properly, if it has a meaning to it, it can be very powerful. If not, if it's just a fashion fad, then it loses that power. Now the image over here is so that we can visualize um, what they're talking about with the tamoko and we can see it down here. Um, where is family's heritage? Now the way that the arms are positioned, it almost seems as if together it forms sort of one complete pattern. And that reflects that notion of belonging within the community and unity as well. Um, but again, this rhetorical question asks, how can you respect your own family when you wear the family signature of strangers? In that sense, we would think, well, that isn't very respectful of our family if we support or show another's family's culture on our bodies. So, again, near the end of this article, we're starting to become a position to believe that tattoos aren't something that you should just get on a whim. If you're going to get one, it should have meaning. Okay, so down here she talks about um, her particular tattoo as just being an ordinary ornament as some other cosmetic peculiarity. So in her case the tattoo does not have power. Now here as well we could use assonance which is the repetition of the vowel sounds, ornament ordinary. So and this creates a contrast, you know, these expressions, ordinary ornament, fashion fad, are very much in contrast with the ideas of powerful tattoos. So here an actual book that's been published, No Tattoos Before You're 30, What I'll Tell My Children, um, and the man on the cover seems to be wearing a tattoo. So it seems that people have obviously had quite a bit of experience with this idea of tattoos and they've learnt lessons similar to this particular blogger here, that tattoos are something that need quite a bit of consideration. That's why perhaps you should wait until you're 30. So coming away from this article, we understand that um, yes, tattoos can be powerful. They have a very deep uh, history and very significant history, but they can also be dangerous and uh, sort of like even offensive in some ways. Therefore, we learn that they need to be considered carefully and only worn or um, bought if they have sort of special significance. Okay, so that's that.